Serious question. When you're out walking your dog, do you ever get caught up in the little contest between all your neighbors and their front porch displays? Why is it that some homes are a little sad and droopy, weeds overtaking clutter, while others seem to be picture perfect like a catalog? Do you have to spend a fortune or spend hours and hours DIY hot gluing little bits and bobs from the Dollar Tree to get the look that you want? I honestly don't think so. I think there's a good middle ground and in today's video I'm going to show you how to do that. Hi, I'm Lindsay, a former teacher DIY renovating our 71 year old ranch style home in Seattle. This week I'm going to transform our shabby little front porch to make it more beautiful and welcoming just in time for my favorite holiday. Our planters are empty and they've been empty for quite some time. The garden bed is collecting weeds, it's got some old dying plants in it, otherwise empty. The front door I painted two years ago is held up pretty well, but definitely needs a touch-up job. There's generally nothing about this front porch that says come on in, and I notice it every time I walk up to our house. First things first, we've got to find some perfect fall plants to plant in the garden pots and the little garden bed next to the front door to really bring the front porch to life. One thing that I kind of struggle with sometimes this time of year is there's not a ton of sunshine. I live in Seattle, it's rainy and cloudy. I really need to be strategic about how I spend my money and how I find plants that are going to last longer than a month. Lavender is always a great choice, seems to thrive in my area, works well in planters with other plants, and is usually fairly cost effective for sizable plants. Climate zone, we're zone eight here in Seattle, and a quick Google search led me to lots of different plants that are evergreen shrubs and perennials essentially that will come back year after year after year as long as we take care of them. Adding in a few pops of color with some annuals like mums. Chrysanthemums or mums for short come in lots of different colors. They're usually fairly cost effective and are fantastic fall bits of color that you can pop into any planter. You can also find some other flowering annuals in the colors that you're hoping to add to your porch makeover. I love the boldness of this cranberry color, the bright, vibrant yellows. Pansies are fantastic annuals, but honestly, they seem to come back. I actually bought, I wanna say four of these last year. I'll link that video down below and covered my entire porch with different colors. And it was so cheerful and beautiful. If you really wanna go the simple route, you can go for a pre put together planter. But my best advice is take this and then transplant it into a beautiful pot at home that you already have, maybe a thrift shop find or a new one that you found on a discount, you can really make something look like you created it even if you didn't. Ornamental cabbage is one of my new fall favorites. I always remembered my mom planting these when I was young and they do very, very well for the winter. Come in different colors, white or purple usually, and they just add a little bit of different texture, leaf, and color to your fall planter. I love this large white cabbage. I think it'll be fantastic in a rectangular planter. It's such a fantastic price, it's gonna really fill up the space. Don't forget to head all the way to the back of the garden center. That's usually where I find all of these evergreen shrubs, like my favorite, the boxwood. This large one's only $35. You can also get smaller sizes. Evergreen shrubs are fantastic because you can put a little bit of money into them now, but they're perennials, so they will come back season after season. Once you find a good variety, don't forget to kind of place them together in your cart or in a little spot away from the other plants so you can start to put them together in groupings that will eventually become your pots. The last thing I look for are little pot fillers like this one. I'm in love with the Creeping Jenny lately. I just love the shape of the leaves. For $15, you can get this set of six little plants that you can spread out around your garden bed, but that's not the only one. There's a lot of other different garden bed fillers, pot fillers that you can use. Make sure it's feeling finished. I especially like these Creeping Myrtles too because they sort of cascade out of a pot. I wanted one large plant to take center stage in our garden bed, and I found the perfect one. It's sizable already, and it's gonna make a lot of beautiful color. I'm so excited to see what it's gonna look like. I couldn't resist a couple more spooky details for our front porch makeover, and check out this guy. I can't wait to see what my dog thinks of that. <laughs> 
and we're gonna try out these command hooks for lights around the door frame. I'm so excited to see what these look like on our porch. Let's get home and get to work. Are you ready, Pa? She doesn't know how she feels about this guy. Should we push the button? Okay. Today, we are going to be planting some fall pots. I'm excited to get all these in the planter. I love how organic they all look. I'm pretty minimalist on my gardening tools. I just like a good set of gloves, knee pad, and some basic hand tools. I've got one big pot here that I need to fill completely with soil, add a little bit of new soil, water this from last year. It's all cleaned out, ready to go. Travis picked up some more potting mix for me. in the front yard because I have a hard time <laughs> making sure to water my plants. Last season I put this in. I just really wanted something, was desperate, bought it at my local hardware store without thinking, and I've hated it pretty much ever since. It's kind of a big eyesore right next to our front door. The one thing I did do was get a nice sprayer, so we're gonna take this off and use it with my new find. We have one of these in the back. This one's called pocket hose. It's one of those expanding fabric hoses. It's so much nicer for watering and just containing in the yard. And then the other thing I found recently was this hose pot. This one's just a plastic one. Some of these are so expensive, you guys. I found so many nice looking ones that were metal or copper, but they were like $50, $75, $125. This one's plastic, and I think it looks pretty good for $20. So I'll try to link this one down below too. The new expandable hose comes with a little sprayer device, but we are gonna trade it out for this better one. So you can change like the type of shower mist jet, all that good stuff. I find it's very useful to have this, especially when you do it in potted plants. Then you can really control the flow and type of water that you are introducing to the plant environment. You up in the sky, I'll carry you home, home to the mountain. Leaves. Maybe something like this is better on the side of the house where it's not so visible. Goodbye, giant tire hose. So you just wind up the hose, put it in the pot, it goes through the hole in the back. It's gonna be so nice and you won't even notice it. Oh my gosh, it's growing. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. <laughs> This one, I'm just taking the boxwood and the cabbage plant, centering them essentially together. Then I'm gonna layer an odd number of smaller plants, also annuals. The only perennial in this particular grouping and the other pot is the 
boxwood and then the other one is the lavender so i'm hoping i can take really good care of those within the pots and then just clear out the other annuals once they die and then just spruce them up with a little bit of color each season that would be awesome low maintenance i'm just loving this new direction and hoping that these plants i can really take care of them <laughs> this cabbage is quite large actually and i'm trying to figure out exactly where our little mom is gonna sit and i i still want it on this side so yeah, she'll get buried in the back, so let's try to sneak her in the front. There we go. Oh, it's looking really just sort of fun and organic, growing wild in the countryside. I'm loving this. There's other super cute little purple cabbage that matches the one in the other pot, so you were all like coordinating and stuff. Kind of just sort of massage the roof all, break it up a little bit. So what it'll take to the new soil. It's finally time to get these plants in the ground. I'm so excited. tree roots down there. We're gonna have to be maybe pulling some of those up. The planters are looking so pretty. I'm more in love with them every day. The new plantings look pretty good. I had to make some adjustments based on where those old tree limbs were found. And that little bucket for the hose is the best thing ever. I'm in the process of selling a bunch of furniture that we've recently replaced online and this dresser has yet to find the perfect owner. So maybe it's okay because we're gonna use it for a little workstation. Since we've got two pink colors to wrangle, it's not a terrible thing to have a little extra space. We've got the extra paint for the front door, outside, exterior. <laughs> that is a special one specific for weatherproofing. I'll link the video where I did that originally down below if you want to check out the full process. And this is the Benjamin Moore Advanced High Gloss paint that we're using on the inside of the door, Tapestry Beige. It's a really creamy, beige color that I really like.
Looking at this door paint, it honestly looks kind of blue-black, which does not look like the door. This is Tricorn Black by Sherwin-Williams. I love this color. It's held up really well. It just got a couple of scratches, so quick touch-up before we finish our little fall refresh will be perfect. <laughs> This paint is going on super navy blue, but I'm trying to remember back two years ago when I originally painted it, and I think I said the exact same thing in the last video. I'm just gonna keep going. It's looking so good. The more I paint, the more I wanna paint. I'm just gonna keep touching up and might just give the whole door another coat. The door is looking fabulous, both inside and out, although I do have a little bit more touching up to do. I also have a list of things to do to finish up this porch makeover and get all the spooky fall decor in there. I'm so excited to finish things up. So we're gonna sweep and clean the pots, the walkway. I have to clean up after all that potting. There's still soil on the walkway. so excited. I think we finally found a buyer for that dresser. So it might be out of here in not wearing my watch, but maybe an hour or two. So fingers crossed. unraveling this super affordable leaf garland I ordered last year on Amazon and never quite figured out how to get hung or ran out of time. It's kind of fun. It's like getting a new thing for free almost because I spent the money last year. They come in these long strands and it comes two strands to a set. Five, five and a half feet, I guess. And they come with these little clear hooks, which is kind of cool. Since we don't have an outlet near our front door, And there's all these different patterns for the blinking. I'm gonna be using these little clear command hooks that are specifically made for strings of lights. I think I'm gonna just put them right on the okay? Here's the garlands. They're so pretty. There's four of them, so I want it to be kind of full. Definitely glad I got two sets because even though there's two in each, I don't think it would have gone all the way around the door. <laughs> Very nearly so. I might just double up at the top to make it like a little fuller at the top. To be honest, when I first saw these, I was a little shocked by the price, but now I understand they are amazing and worth every penny. I'm so happy with how they look. They're completely hidden and they're so easy to use and I can easily string the lights to strands and then the garland using all the same hooks. So very, very excited. You can see I just clipped in the two strands of the lights, the little plastic strand here on the garland. It's just gonna fit right there, just kind of between the leaves and then try to use the leaves to kind of cover it up. 
very scientific way of fluffing these. <laughs> I'm convinced this is the right wall for the spider web, so we're gonna give it a try. I untangle it, but I don't know if it's working here as well as I thought it was going to, so now I'm thinking this side. touches like placing these little tombstones i also have a couple lanterns i'm gonna bring out i was gonna diy some but these were super adorable i like the little moss that's on them and they were only 14.99 or something i'll link them down below they just have these little anchors in the bottom and you just flip them around and they become little anchor stakes how do we feel about that kind of cover up and then maybe over there Need one more thing for over here. Lanterns. Thinking the big one. I did some after shots during the daytime just a few minutes ago, and I'm gonna wait and do it again after sundown so you can see the full effect. I think it's time for the reveal in three, two, one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a little bit of inspiration to keep it simple, focus on cleaning up, investing in some perennials just in time for Halloween. And if you're not a Halloween person, just take away all the Halloween decor and make it a fall front porch, which is very easy to do. Don't go yet, check out my last video, which was a fall makeover for our dining room and living room. If you like this video, you'll definitely like that one. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you don't miss a single episode and I'll see you over in that video.